with experts anticipating a huge surge in migrants this month coming to the U.S., President Joe Biden's administration said Tuesday it will temporarily send 1,500 troops to help secure the U.S.-Mexico border. Pentagon spokesman Pat Ryder. For 90 days, these 1,500 military personnel who will be sourced from the active duty component will fill critical capability gaps such as ground-based detection and monitoring, data entry, and warehouse support until CPB can address these needs through contracted support military personnel will not directly participate in law enforcement activities. The increase in border resources, adding to the 2,500 National Guard troops already there, comes as Trump-era COVID-19 restrictions, known as Title 42, are set to end on May 11th. The policy had allowed U.S. authorities to rapidly expel non-Mexican migrants to Mexico without the chance to seek asylum. Biden, who is running for re-election, already has grappled with record numbers of migrants caught illegally crossing the border during his tenure, and has taken criticism from all sides. Republicans have blasted Biden for rolling back Trump's hardline policies, while Democrats and immigration activists have lashed out over what they see as Biden's toughening approach to border security. Still, Reuters national security correspondent Idrissa Lee says the border deployment comes with some reservations within the Pentagon. Under President Donald Trump, there was a real push to move thousands of active duty troops to the border um, for what at times looked like very mundane tasks. Questions have been raised how this is different, how the current deployment of 1,500 active duty troops is going to be different. Pentagon spokesman Pat Ryder said it won't affect readiness, but what we're being told by sources is that for a long time there's been concern at the Pentagon that the longer these type of missions go on, the more likely they are to impact readiness, the more likely they are to turn troops' attention away from the task at hand, which is, you know, countering China, looking at the war in Ukraine and how they can support those efforts. U.S. military troops have been used to help secure the border during previous administrations, including under President Bush and Obama. White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre on Tuesday went so far as to call such deployments a common practice. But some in the president's own party were not on board. Senator Bob Menendez, a Democrat and chair of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, said Biden's decision to send troops to the border was unacceptable and accused the president of trying to score political points. In their first strike in 15 years, thousands of film and television writers marched in picket lines Tuesday in Hollywood and New York. It's the first day of the Writers Guild strike and we're out here to flex our muscles and let the producers know we're not happy with what they're offering. The walkout sent Hollywood into turmoil, disrupting TV production as the industry wrestles with the shift to streaming. The Writers Guild of America, or WGA, said its leadership unanimously supported a strike after failing to reach an agreement with studios like Netflix and Disney the future viability of their career is at stake. So I think they're willing to do what it takes. Ellen Stutzman is the chief negotiator for the WGA, a union that represents more than 11,000 writers. We're asking for increases in pay and residuals so that writers can uh, make a career and stay in this profession and live and work in the cities like New York and LA. Uh, we're asking for very basic working condition issues like having a two-step deal or weekly pay for screenwriters to help address the free work pressures that they face when they're writing their scripts. Viewers will first see the strike's impact on late-night talk shows, some of which will immediately begin airing reruns. But a prolonged dispute could disrupt fall programming. Conglomerates are under pressure from Wall Street to make their streaming services profitable after pumping billions of dollars into programming to attract subscribers. With the rise of streaming eroding television ad revenue as traditional TV audiences shrink. The Alliance of Motion Picture and Television Producers, which represents the studios, said it had proposed generous increases in compensation and was willing to increase its offer, but said it objected to other demands. Writers say they have suffered in the streaming TV boom with shorter seasons and smaller residual payments. 
The WGA also wants safeguards to prevent studios from using AI to generate new scripts from writers' previous work. It's become a very important issue. Uh, I think as <laughs> every day there's some new story about AI and it, there's no doubt that those services will continue to improve. And right now, as some of our members call them, they're plagiarism machines and they have no business in the writing of scripts. The last writer strike in 2007 and 2008 lasted 100 days. The action cost the California economy an estimated $2.1 billion as productions shut down and out-of-work writers, actors and producers cut back spending. A man who suspected of killing five of his neighbors in Texas has been arrested after a four-day manhunt. The suspect, identified as Francisco Oropesa, was captured on Tuesday in the Texas town of Cut and Shoot about 17 miles away from where the bloodshed broke out last week. He faces five counts of murder. Last Friday, Oropesa had been firing bursts from his semi-automatic rifle in his yard. That prompted his neighbors to ask him to stop because the noise was keeping their baby awake. Police said the 38-year-old went back into his apartment and reloaded, then barged into his neighbor's home and opened fire, killing five of the ten people inside, including an eight-year-old boy. The FBI said it had been working with law enforcement nationwide and in Mexico to find Oropesa. San Jacinto County Sheriff Greg Caper said law enforcement agencies received a tip-off about the suspect's location on Tuesday. He was caught hiding in a closet underneath some laundry. They, would, they effectively made the arrest. He is uninjured and he is currently being taken to my facility in Cold Springs. However, authorities declined to comment whether the suspect was aided by family or associates while on the run. Police say Oropesa is a Mexican national who was deported from the U.S. four times since 2009. When asked how he was able to get hold of an AR-15-style rifle, Caper suggested he could have bought it off the streets. Most of the victims were shot in the head. All were from Honduras and living at the address, but were not all family members. Pulled in our driveway to tell us the dreadful news. Justin and Ashley Webster say they're living a nightmare they hope no other family has to go through. Police say their 14-year-old daughter Ivy is among the seven bodies found on Monday near Henrietta, Oklahoma. They say Ivy was known as a girl that would stick up for others. I sat on the floor and I read every single card that every single kid wrote in her locker. And most of them were, when people were mean to me, you were the one that stuck up for me. You were the one that talked to me. You were the one that was nice to me. She, she sure was. I was an angel. She would go out of her way to make other people feel happy. Her body, as well as that of a 16-year-old girl, were found when officers searched the property of a convicted sex offender, Jesse McFadden. Police say they found McFadden's body there too, although officials caution that none of the victims have been formally identified by the county's medical examiner. I'm confused on how he was able to get a rental house. Ivy's father says he wants more information about how McFadden came to live in the area and be around young people. Her parents are remembering Ivy as a softball player and an animal lover that had a big impact around her. She touched a lot. She did. I hope she continues. Fighting has escalated over the death of a Palestinian hunger striker in Israeli custody. Late Tuesday, militants in the Gaza Strip fired salvos of rockets into Israel. In response, Israeli planes struck Gaza City. The Israeli military says it hit weapons manufacturing sites and training camps of Hamas, the Islamic group that governs the coastal enclave. Tensions flared after Qada Adnan, a prominent Islamic Jihad member detained in Israel, died Tuesday after he refused food for almost three months. He's the first Palestinian hunger striker to die in Israeli custody in more than 30 years. Israel's prison service says Adnan, who was awaiting trial, refused medical care. Disputing their claim, Adnan's lawyer accused Israeli authorities of withholding treatment. 
News of Qatar's death spread anger among Palestinians. The Islamic Jihad has sworn revenge on Qatar's death, but Qatar's wife has appealed for calm from resistance groups and said she doesn't want to see bloodshed. According to the Palestinian Prisoners Association, Adnan had been arrested by Israel 12 times. Washington State Department Deputy Spokesman Vedant Patel commented at a Tuesday briefing saying all individuals, including prisoners, should be treated humanely. That is our belief, that is our view. He also noted the Palestinian Islamic Jihad is a designated foreign terrorist organization that continues to advance violence. Thank you.